News Talk 820 WBAP, now on FM at 93.3. Make it a preset, y'all. 800-288-WBAP is our number, 800-288-9227. Well, I think it's about uh, 13 attorneys general, in uh, including liberal states like California, not just uh, more conservative states like Missouri, have joined together because they know TikTok is a it's a malware app. It really is. And uh, I heard a former Intel official on Fox News say that uh, last year uh, out in the yard working on my lawn. I listen to a lot of Fox News on the weekends in my headphones as I do lawn. I, it's uh, like a favorite pastime of mine. And I'm very happy to announce my lawn will no longer be lawn uh, mowed every week. It'll be mowed every two weeks because it's slowing down finally. When you have almost a third of an acre, you like the fact that that happens. When that happens, because I always get like that. I get overwhelmed after the, towards the end. I'm like, this is ridiculous. I'm spending so much time. I love it, but then I'm like, I'm grateful for that three, three month, four month break that we get. Anyway, so um, it is a mal- malware app because there's a couple of things. The, the version of TikTok here is not the version in China. It's a Chinese based company, which means the government of China, the CCP, uh, Chinese Communist Party can can get anything it wants from TikTok, any data from your child. And, and TikTok has access to your microphone, your cameras, your contacts and everything. Uh, that's what the app does. And the, the app in the TikTok app in China is for they do math reading and stuff. And it it literally stops after 30 minutes of using it uh, is what uh, I brought up on. So it's not the same one here. The one here is harm, very harmful and very addictive. And in fact, their own internal documents at TikTok prove this because these attorney generals sued and got a lot of confidential documents from TikTok. And it's supposed to be redacted. All the confidential documents that they received, not redacted for the public because they entered in, into agreement with the U.S. Attorney's Office. But they would share stuff so they comply with the law, but also this is all propriety, proprietary information. So anything released has to be redacted as far as showing any information that's confidential. Unfortunately, the Kentucky Attorney General, just to show you, conservative and liberal ones are in on this, which is good. Um, the Kentucky Attorney General accidentally missed some redactions. And so NPR of uh, Kentucky got a hold of it and print published it. And the story headline from NPR says, TikTok knows its app is harming kids. New internal documents show. For the first time, uh, the internal TikTok communications have been made public. NPR reports that show a company unconcerned with the harms the app poses for American teenagers. This is despite its own research validating many child safety concerns. It knows it is harming our children and it does not care. You know why? Because they're not Chinese students. This, this, this is in China. And you have to understand something. They know it is hurting us. They know it is hurting our population. They know it is hurting our children. And they don't have a problem with it because they don't care about them. They want to make money. And the Chinese Communist Party loves hurting us in any way they can. And it's working. Uh, It's part of a more than two-year investigation into TikTok by 14 attorneys general that led to a state officials, this is from NPR story today, or the other day, uh, led to state officials suing the company Tuesday. The lawsuit alleges TikTok was designated with the express intention of addicting young people to the app. Now, again, I want you to know they're liberal Democrat uh, uh, attorneys general from California. Uh, That attorney general is uh, Rob Bonta. He uh, he's in on this, too. He says they've chosen to profit over the health and safety and well-being and future of our children Uh, at a news conference in San Francisco. He said that is not something we can accept. So we've sued. The um, continuing on each of the separate lawsuits 
in each of the separate lawsuits from all these attorneys general, dozens of internal communications documents and research data re, were redacted, blacked out. That means blacked out, of course, from public view since authorities entered into a confidentiality agreements with TikTok. So, yes, we get this information, but nobody will see it outside of us. But in one of the lawsuits filed by attorney general in Kentucky, his office, his or her office, the redactions were faulty. It was revealed when C- Kentucky public Public Radio copied and pasted excerpts of the redacted material, bringing to light some 30 pages of documents that was kept secret. The material mostly summarizes uh, is mostly summaries of internal studies and communications show some remedial measures like time management skill tools would have a negligible reduction in screen time. So the company went ahead and decided to release and tout these fe- the features. Uh, going over to another story. Still regarding the attorneys general suing TikTok, the headline on this one from the Associated Press is TikTok is designed to be addictive to children, to kids and causes them harm. U.S. attorneys lawsuit says attorneys general more than a dozen states and the District of Columbia, extremely liberal like California, uh, filed lawsuits against TikTok. A week, almost a week ago, Tuesday, you know, a week from tomorrow, saying that the popular short form video app is designed to be addicted to children and harms their mental health. At the heart of each lawsuit is the TikTok algorithm, which powers what users see on the platform by populating the app's main for you feed. Feed with uh, the content tailored to people's interests. The lawsuits note that TikTok designed features they, that they say ad- addict, addict children to the platform, such as the ability to scroll endlessly through content, push notifications that come with built-in buzzes and face filters that create unattainable appearances for users. Oh, wow. They've chosen profit over the health and safety of well and well-being of our children, said the California Attorney General. So here's my questions for you. Do you think TikTok purposely made itself addictive to your child? Do you think TikTok purposely made itself addictive for your child and for mine, for all of our children? Purposely, knowing it's addictive, to addict our children, just like a drug. And do you think the CCP looks at TikTok as a weapon that can be used to harm a large portion of Americans and our future strength as a nation? And what would you like to see done to TikTok? 800-288-WBAP is our number. 800-288-9227. Lines wide open. Chime in right now. I want to tell you, I think this is absolutely designed to extract as much attention and money out of our children. And they do not care. Uh, I'm thinking of like the Dark Crystal, when, where it drains your essence and then you're a mindless slave. They don't care what happens to your child as long as they're making money. The Chinese Communist Party government loves this because it is hurting massive swaths of this country. And it is teaching children to think the Chinese Communist Party is good and is and, and there's all that stuff about them is lies. The news on China that's bad is almost completely uh, um, missing. There's almost no bad news. They don't allow it. But the good news about China is in there. There were there were Chinese news channels that are propaganda from the government on TikTok. That was how you learn about China. Our government caught it and flagged it, and they, oh, we're sorry. We'll, we'll ban that one. And when the Wall Street Journal did a, re, uh, uh, they've did, they've done so many uh, stories on this that have been wonderful. When they when they looked and they've done ones about how harmful the app is and how it turns you towards suicidal or sexual or violent things, like just keeps going that way even if you don't want to, or you don't try to do that. But it also, um, they were showing in there how uh, harmful it is. And how addictive it is. And I think that that China looks at this, the Chinese Communist Party looks at this as a wonderful weapon to hurt us. But the the journal was also, I was going on that, was that they also uh, found uh, it was tremendously pro-China and tremendously pro-Black Lives Matter. Uh, All It's all designed in a pro uh, transgender, the radical transgender uh, stuff. So this is a perfect way to harm a whole nation. It really is. 
So yes, I think TikTok purposely made itself addictive to our children because they literally do not care about hurting us. They just want to make money off of us. And the CCP looks at this as a great weapon and a great way to brainwash our population to think Chinese Communist Party is good and that we are the bad ones to hate our country, to hate our police, to hate our military, to hate authorities and not respect them. Yes, it's a weapon and they look at it as a weapon and they use it. And what I would like to see done to TikTok is a forced sale or shutting it down, which, you know, is eventually coming. They've, they've pushed through that stuff. The deadline should be coming up soon, I believe, to force the sale or shut them down. 800-288-WBAP is our number, 800-288-9227. I would like to see a forced sale to a United States company or to shut it down. Either way, it's fine with me. We don't have to ban it. We just have to have it all sold to a U.S. entity that can be monitored by our government. Not for the, the social media banning and all the stuff of the woke crap and the left crap or whoever's in charge having their way, but harmful uh, to uh, hurt and destroy people and to gather intelligence from. This has got to be stopped. How about you? What do you say to that? 800-288-WBAP is our number. 800-288-9227. And guess what we're carrying tomorrow? A big old debate. Ted Cruz versus Colin Allred, the only debate. It'll be carried by our sister station, um, not our sister station, our partner, courtesy of our media partner, WFAA TV Channel 8. Uh, WFA News 8. Uh, so there you go. Uh, that'll be tomorrow on the Chris, not on the Chris Crock Show, but it'll be at 7 p.m. on News Talk 820 WBAP and now on FM at 93.3, 7 p.m. on WBAP. I will be listening. We will be pulling audio and we will be talking about it coming up tomorrow. It'll be a great one because Ted Cruz is a master debater. I got to be careful how I say that, right? I don't want to confuse Ted Cruz with Jeffrey Lubin. Remember Jeffrey Lubin at uh, Fake News CNN, where he got caught uh, roughing up the suspect? He got caught going to a Yankees game, watching the Yankees game? Yeah. All right, uh, we're going to get to that, Cruz versus Allred, and the only debate for tomorrow. We're going to talk about the latest with these guys and where it stands on the Chris Crock Show on News Talk 820 WBAP, and now on FM at 93.3. That's coming up next at 1019. Uh, 800-288-WBAP is our number. That's 800-288-9227. News Talk 820 WBAP now on FM at 93.3. Make it a preset. 800-288-WBAP is our number. 800-288-9227. Okay, so tomorrow on News Talk 820 WBAP and now on FM at 93.3, we are carrying the big debate, the one and only debate between Ted Cruz and Colin Allred. I cannot wait to see that. I really can't. It is, um, it's going to be, a, I believe, a really good debate. I have no idea about Colin Allred's abilities. I know he's extremely smooth and Good-looking former NFL player, which helps, you know. It really does. Ted Cruz, you either love him or hate him. And I'm going to tell you right now that that uh, I call, and when you look up the, the word gadfly, it, it has real pejorative negative uh, uh, connotations. But I, I had the, I really, I'm really, I was talking to my son. He's got uh, two and a half semesters left before he graduates at one of the universities here in town, public, uh, one of the Texas uh, public university here in town. And um, I was telling him, uh, I loved studying ancient, ancient Greek philosophy, Socrates, Socrates, Plato, Aristotle, and it was um, it was so um, difficult to understand when I would read it because it's so like you know lengthy and, and in depth kind of a thing when it kind of loops around and stuff and it goes all over the place uh, that I would have to read it twice typically and uh, highlight some stuff and everything. But once I got it, my mind was like, Phew. I was like, whoa. Um, and and Socrates was was known as the the gad a gadfly a gadfly you know which uh, is what bites you out, like a bite that's like a horsefly or something you know bites you and stuff like that and, and I think that Tom uh, Tom Cruise Ted uh, Ted Cruz is our gadfly and I say that in a good way but I think he has horrible campaigns 
he's going on all, all the media and doing interviews, which I, I have no problem with, but um, I, I see I see very few yard signs. I, I have seen two in my neighborhood. We saw I saw none last time. Remember last time I was raising a massive a four alarm fire uh, for months and people were calling in from all over the Metroplex. It blew up that night and in that week or two because I was just alarmed of how uh, little campaigning I saw. And so I want to ask you about that too. The debates tomorrow between Colin Allred and Ted, uh, Ted Cruz, we're carrying it live on WBAP. 7 p.m. is when the debate starts. And you and I will go live at 8, I believe. I don't know how long the debate is. I'm going to guess an hour. I don't know if it'll go into my show. If, if it goes an hour and a half, then I'll, we'll go on at 8.30. But the point being is we'll be playing highlights from it and talking about it and seeing who you think won. But you can listen to it here. You can watch it on our media partner, WFA, WFAA TV Channel 8. Um, I, I do feel like he doesn't fight hard enough. And this happens every time. Every six years. He's doing it again, talking about how close it is. And it is very close. And, you know, uh, Colin Allred comes across as somebody a lot less more reasonable than than Beto Hussein O'Rourke, the cultural appropriator, the fake Mexican uh, who wants to take away your guns. Hell, hell yeah, we're going to take away your AR-15. Remember that? Um, he's got a good chance. But I feel like Ted Cruz literally knows that he's going to win by three or more points, and therefore it'll be okay. He always falls behind Trump, and he is right now. Trump's polling. Uh, well, I'll give you the details on on the difference, but I want to ask you a few questions right now. Do you feel like Ted Cruz doesn't fight hard enough to make sure he gets reelected? Are you seeing enough Cruz yard signs out there? Is Team Ted Cruz is Team Ted Cruz campaigning hard, or do you think it's not campaigning as hard as it needs to? And if you think he simply doesn't work hard enough on his reelection bids, so here's a big question. Should we consider somebody else that's a Republican that'll that'll hustle more? Or does he know something we don't? Internal polls maybe that show him winning solidly, but yet he's kind of acting panic. I saw him in Hannity the other day, and he was saying, I need money, and you know, he, it's, it's close, and, and my opponent's doing this. and They're, doing, oh, they're pouring in like, um, I can't remember if he said a billion dollars or... Or a uh, hundred million. I can't remember what it was, but the Democrat Senate uh, Senator uh, what's it, Schumer has just made this a top priority to try to knock Cruz off to help them hold the Senate. Those are my questions. Do you feel like Cruz doesn't fight hard enough to make sure he gets reelected? Are you are you not seeing it? Are, are you seeing enough Ted Cruz yard signs out there? Is Cruz, Cruz's team campaigning working hard, do you think, or not as hard as it needs to? 800-288-WBAP is our number, 800-288-9227. I'll give you some more details heading into what the polls say, heading into tomorrow's debate uh, that we'll carry live on WBAP at 7 on News Talk 820 WBAP and now on FM at 93.3, Chris Croc Show. 800-288-WBAP is our number. News Talk 820 WBAP now on FM at 93.3. Make that a preset, y'all. 800-288-WBAP is our number. 800-288-9227. Let's see what we got on the latest polls in in uh, with Cruz versus here we go Cruz versus all red we have a New York Times Siena poll that was done Thursday the 10th where Cruz is up by four we got a Marist poll which has Cruz up by five we have um, that was on October 10th both of those two then the last one before that was September 26th Cruz up four and then we had one uh on um, September 23rd, and that is the the one on the 26th of September is Hill Emerson with Cruz up four. Texas Hispanic Policy Foundation on the 23rd of uh, September, Cruz up three. So four, five, four, three. Pretty solid, huh? The debate's important. We're carrying it live at 7 o'clock on WBAP tomorrow. Then you and I react live at 8. And my question is for you. Do you feel like Ted Cruz doesn't fight hard enough to make sure he gets reelected? It always seems that way. I'm not trying to go after him this time. Last time I was, because it was like insane. Beto was, people were freaking out about the fake Mexican, the uh, cultural appropriator, the fake skateboarder, uh, waving his arms all around like an apoplectic child. Do you feel like Cruz does not fight hard enough to make sure he gets reelected? Now, are you seeing enough Cruz yard signs out there? 
Is Team Cruz campaigning hard or do you think not as hard as it needs to? Do they always kind of phone it in? It seems like that to me. He's always got my vote. I love him. By the way, he does not ever want to go to the Supreme Court. He was offered it three times by Trump when Trump was in office, and both times, he, all three times, he turned it down. He does not want to do that. He's told me himself he does not want to do that. Uh, so people that think that are president, no, no, and no, and no. He is perfect where he's at in the Senate. He is perfect where he's at. He is the gadfly. He bites people uh, like a little the, the, the horse fly, and that's, part, that's his role is to raise hell. And he's very good at it, and I like him for that. But I feel like he always kind of phones it in, and I don't like that. Do you feel the same way? Um, and are you seeing enough Cruz yard signs out there? Is Cruz, uh, Cruz's team campaigning hard enough or not as hard as it needs to? And if you think he doesn't work hard enough on his reelection bids, then should we consider somebody else? Not the Democrat, but I'm saying for another Republican. Or does he know something we don't? Maybe internal polls that show him winning solidly or whatever. But it's always a little too close for anyone's liking, uh, especially mine. Uh, 800-288-WBAP is our number. 800-288-9227. Lisa in Arlington, WBAP. Hello. Hey, how are y'all? Good. How are you? Awesome. Thank you. You're, Thanks for having me on. And I agree with you. Thank you. Okay. About Cruz. He needs to do, uh, well, he is doing a lot. His campaign is working their butts off. As a precinct chair myself, block walking and doing all of that, mm-hmm. putting out as many signs as we can. I will tell you, we have actually, some of our group has actually witnessed Cruz signs being stolen and put in the trash. Oh, I don't so doubt you. Happening. He, he, that is he. Happening. Like I was saying earlier, you love him or you hate him. There's no in between with him, and that, that's good. Right. That's fine. I don't care. He doesn't care. Go ahead. And there are some voters that didn't want signs. They are going to vote for him, but when we talk to them, they just don't want the hate that comes with having a sign in your yard. You know, I want conservative sign. I personally, Lisa, I want a cruise sign and a Trump sign in my yard, but I I usually do that, but my wife's like, I don't want to, you know, I'm like, oh, come on. She didn't do that to me last. She, she's never done that to me. Uh, so this time around, she's like, I don't want to. And I've asked her twice, and I'm not going to put a yard sign in if she doesn't want me to. It's not the end of the world. I mean, I know how I'm voting. You know how you're voting. I know my neighbors and right. I know how we're voting, you know. So, but, but, so you do feel like he's kind of phoning in or you don't? Well, they are. The Cruz campaign is working so hard. They are at, now I'm in Tarrant County. They are at the GOP office every week, uh, several Good. days a week, calling, texting, passing signs out, doing block walking. Um, they're trying to hit every neighborhood they can. And if people are out there, they just get a, get a hold of the cruise campaign. They want volunteers. And that's another thing. All Red, they have the money to yes. pay people. They yeah. have millions of dollars. They are paying their block walkers. Mm-hmm. They are paying their phone callers. They're spending thousands on texts and ads and I don't know what else, robocalls and all of that. It's crazy. Yeah. Um, I, I want to look this up right now because it's, it's, um, um, I'm right. I'm typing this in. I'm going to look at it, Rufus. How many? How many? Uh, how much money has uh, Democrats spent to uh, to get Colin Allred elected? Because I I, th- I can't remember the exact a uh, number. But Ted Cruz, I, I listened to him on Hannity the other day on on Fox News, and he, uh-huh. you know he was plugging away, was saying you know give it's donate money fun. here, and they they, so they get. I think he said they're spending a hundred million or something. I don't know. Let me see what I got here. Here's a ABC affiliate in Houston. Democrats pour millions into Texas Senate race ads in attempt for Colin Rara to win. Let's see if they have a number. It's it's a lot. I mean, I swear to you, I want to say Cruz had a hundred million, some kind of a record for a hundred million. I think so. Wow. I could be off. No and that's why I'm trying to make sure. Um, here we go. Here's how much Ted Cruz and Colin Allred have raised. Let's see here. Okay. Colin Allred, 41.2 million raised. Cruz, 40 million. And uh, raised by the candidate, 38 million for Allred versus 23 raised by Cruz. PAC, 16.6 million for, for Cruz versus 3 million for Allred. Cash on hand, 10.5 million for uh, 
all red to 14.2 crews. That's interesting. Um, this is from KEERA, the uh, uh, NPR affiliate here. This is July 18th. It might not be 100 million. I, 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 gotta, I, I cannot remember. He said it on Hannity last week. I just can't remember. It was a huge amount. I think he said it's the most ever. I think he said it's the most ever, ever uh, raised and get not. He hasn't raised it. It's been given by the DNC through Chuck Schumer is what he was saying. Yeah. You know how they do that? They're like, okay, because they know they're they're trying to keep the Senate. So they're going to pour in the most amount of money. I'm sure they're doing the same thing for John Tester in Montana. That race looks to be in our hands now. Thank God. Thank God. Go ahead. And there's cats, I think, just paying people to go block walking. And I don't know if that money goes through the campaign itself or not. You're saying with Cruz or Allred or what? Or both? For Allred. Because they're paying these college kids to go right. walk, walk, and put stuff on the doorstep, and they don't know anything about him. Whereas, you got to remember, Cruz is volunteers. We are all passionate for him and yes. we want him to win because we love him so much. And we we don't have the um, numbers of volunteers, but we are all his volunteers. Here's uh, we he, love him. here's a report this month on the eighth, a couple days ago. Cruz opponent Allred raises thirty million in three months. To date, God. Allred uh, has raised $68.7 million for a Senate campaign, see? And um, uh, third quarter, third quarter, July, August, September, $9 million, More than the $21 million Cruz reported for the same time. Wow. Okay, Cruz's allies had expected in recent week. Cruz allies had expected in recent weeks that Republicans would spend between fifty and hundred million to defend the incumbent GOP senator. Democrats would spend see a hundred to one hundred and fifty million to defeat him. So yes, oh I was God. right, a hundred to one hundred and fifty. Cruz between fifty and a hundred. So we're going to be outspent by fifty to a hundred million dollars. Wow. Now one more thing. Ah. These Democrat uh, organizations. Hmm also don't have to spend the kind of money that we spend. There are printers and people who print the signs at a very cheap price. I'm talking like 30 cents hmm. for the Democrats, whereas we're paying 2 to $5 per sign to have them printed. Let me, let me read this. Other things. So they're, they're, they're businesses that are donating this stuff so they don't have to spend mm. so much. There is a there's a campaign material. There's a big write up in the Wall Street Journal today. Is Ted Cruz blowing his reelection race? And uh, this oh. is in today's journal, and it says right here. Uh, and here's the love him or hate him. Local tech worker forty has the opposite reaction. Um, you know, they have a Plano guy who's eighty six says he's a man of integrity and intelligence, which I agree. Uh, a local tech worker says in Dallas, in the north suburbs of Dallas, had the opposite reaction. I would vote for anything over Ted Cruz, a rock or a potato. Said this forty year old. He's a terrible person. And so uh, that's just how you know. That's how liberals uh, feel about him and. And, you know, I don't despise uh, or think Colin O'Rourke's a terrible person, but he's a super leftist pretending to be a moderate. And that's that's true. You know that. And I know that Here, they also go on and say recent polls from Marist College and The New York Times Siena found Cruz leading already almost among likely voters by five and four points, respectively. Both surveys, though, short Trump leading Kamala in the presidential race by seven points. So there's a deficit of two to three points compared to Trump and uh, Austin Republican strategy. Strategist, um, Austin-based Republican strategist Matt, I'm, I'm going to butcher this, McCoyak has been raising alarms about the race being unacceptably close. He says Cruz is consistently running behind Trump, who won Texas by less than six points in 2020. If this year's margin is two or three points tighter, Cruz could lose, he says. So that's kind of some of the alarm. It is. It's terrible. Well, it's good to hear you say they're working hard over there. Huh? What's that? What's that? People... People need to pray for this election. We really, really need to pray. You, you do have to admit, and I, I would much rather have two Ted Cruz's than two. Uh, what, who's the guy that we, I can't corn and None of us can stand him. Um, he's a, he's barely a Republican. Um, you know that somebody like uh, uh, what's his name? Um, I just said his name. Cornyn gets a lot more uh, margin on his reelections because he's a moderate Republican and, and, and such versus uh, Cruz. That's why it's so tight because Cruz sticks out like a Thor's thumb for the for the right reasons though. Agreed. Yes. I appreciate That's your great call. Uh, thank you for, I'm glad you're out there volunteering. All right, we'll talk to Roy in Dallas coming up next on a war, he says, that Democrats are waging against Cruz. Plus, 
Do you know who Lieutenant Dan is? Not the one from Ferris B- uh, from Ferris B- from um uh what's his, what is it called? Thank you, Forrest Gump. Yeah, um, the one not the one from Forrest Gump, but he, he it's uh, there's a boat that it's like the Lieutenant Dan boat from the movie Forrest Gump, and there's this guy who lives in it, and he survived through the Hurricane Milton that just went through, and some some idiot online saw it and thought it was oh my gosh, this poor guy's living in a boat. Let's raise money for him. He's a hero. A classic case of fools rushing in to throw money at somebody they have no idea who's about. It may have been the worst amount of worst decision they've made when uh, throwing money at something they don't know about. You got to hear this. We'll get into that coming up next as well as take Roy's call on the debate tomorrow and who's winning, who's losing um, with Cruz versus Allred before the debate tomorrow at 7 p.m. on WBAP. Thanks to our media partner, WFA, WFAA TV Channel 8, 800-288-WBAP is our number, 800-288-9227 on News Talk 820 WBAP and now on FM at 93.3. Seven p.m. is the debate. All red, uh, Cruz versus All Red, uh, courtesy of our media partner WFA WFAA News Eight. We're carrying it live at seven, thanks to their generosity of sharing the audio with us. And then you and I will react live at eight. I cannot wait. Speaking of that, I want to talk to you about this. Do you feel like uh, Ted Cruz doesn't fight hard enough to make sure he gets reelected every every six years? And are, are you seeing enough Cruz yard signs out there? Is Team Cruz campaigning hard or not as hard as it needs to? And if you think he simply doesn't work hard enough on his reelection bid, should we consider somebody else? Even though I love the guy, uh, he's right where he needs to be. Uh, or or does uh, he know something we don't know? Are internal polls showing that he's going to win solidly, so everything's going to be just fine, or what? 800-288-WBAP is our number, 800-288-9227. Roy in Dallas. Hello. What do you got, WBAP? Good morning, sir. How are you doing? Good, sir. How are you? Good morning, good evening, good afternoon. Okay. Let me tell you about some of the dirty tactics that Dallas area Democrats are doing, Mm -hmm. especially those folks down there at 1400 North Washington Street and the, the... uh, AFLCO and the CWAs. Mm-hmm. They are using the internet, going through Facebook, to use their sources of trying to go to individuals like me. I'm a registered Republican to get their message out for to, for me to change my vote to vote for Colin Allred and Kamala Harris. Say that again. What, what does it say on Facebook, you said? Uh, they send me text messages through Facebook. Yes. Wanting me to vote for Colin Allred mm-hmm. and for Kamala Harris. I get repeated numerous messages through uh, to their. Facebook. Yes, sir. Absolutely. I mean, I get bombarded. Mm-hmm. And, you know, and this is constant and now you ask about the presence and the visibility at ted cruz yard signs i get around quite a bit in dallas Mm -hmm. i see especially around white rock lake area Mm -hmm. the lake highlands area east dallas area especially in my neighborhood Mm -hmm. i see more Colin Allred yes. and Harris signs well, it's yard signs. It's 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 about sixty to seventy percent Democrat. Anyways, I, I go there all the time. I have my one of my deep mentors, uh, one of most, the greatest mentor of my life is uh, lives in the Lake Highlands. I go all the time. And I was at my friend's house on Saturday, which we go to regularly. Uh, we did a double date with him and his wife, so we we're there all the time. My son's best friends are in Lake Highlands, so mm-hmm. yeah, we're always yeah. there. Mm-hmm. And, and, you know and. Ted Cruz is there fighting for us, fighting for our Second Amendment rights. He is fighting for the, uh, protecting the Constitution of the. But you say United. he is working hard enough. Yeah, I okay. believe he, he is absolutely. All right, brother. You know, why doesn't he pull I as well as Trump? I got, I got to let you go in a sec. But why does he? What, why doesn't he pull as well as Trump here in Texas? Uh, well, I have. No, it has to be outside dollars that are coming uh, in. Okay. And I got to roll. I got to roll, Chinese. but I appreciate your call. Thank you. Brian and Ken, WBAP. Hello. Hey, how's it going tonight? Good. How are you? Pretty good. I was calling to say I see more Colin Alred signs than I do Kamala Harris signs, 
but we still see a lot more Cruz and Trump signs than Democrat signs. Where again? In Canton? In Canton. Yeah, that's Canton what I expect. And, and people that are, are shocked to see more uh, uh, all red signs in, in Lake Highlands, dude, that's a, that's a leftist area. It is. There's money, and it's in the city. I appreciate your call, Brian. Okay, um, boy, we don't have time to get to Lieutenant Dan. We'll get it to it uh, tomorrow.